turn on recording. Okay, so at this point, uh, we're recording this session. So if you want to go back to it later on, uh, you'll be able to take a chance. To, you'll be able to get a chance to review this material. If you aren't able to join us today, uh, you can get your first look at it as well. So as I said, uh, uh, the sample problem, sample uh, uh, examples that I gave you uh, basically give you a rough idea of what kind of multiple choice questions are going to be present. There's also going to be maybe some matching questions. There's also going to be a couple of problems. And since Two of the labs that we did involved some calculations, particularly the uh, pump calibration, uh, the uh, particulate sampling, the uh, P uh, PCM asbestos counts, uh, and so on and so forth. And we also mentioned, we didn't really get a chance to do too much with VOCs, but we did mention some material on VOCs. I don't, I don't think there'll be very much on that uh, because we didn't spend a lot of time on it, although it's one of the things that we really want to know something about. So we get into later on the semester, and we work with some other uh, measurements. We'll get into that. We'll go back into that a bit. Okay. So just to go over these quickly, um, these are more to give you a, a, an idea of flavored exam. So which of the following is not a laboratory accreditation program? Anybody want to give me a guess on that? Uh, is it a D or yeah. VPP? There you go. It's D. Exactly right. That's kind. You know. You know what that. You know VPP stands for. That's an OSHA. It's something volunteer program. Or exactly. Something? If you're an employer, you can set up. A voluntary protection program with OSHA. So, so in one of the and one of the slides, most likely, we did mention that a lot of you guys know that. But it's kind of a giveaway too. If you look at EPA, right? EPA D mm -hmm. W L C P. What you see D W in there? What do you think it might be for? Yeah. Drinking water, right? Drinking water lab yeah. certification program. New York mm -hmm. State E L A P. We should all know that because we live with that every day as an, as industrial hygienists. And AIHA, industrial hygiene proficiency testing, well, proficiency testing basically means that, that you're checking someone's measurements. So it, it is a laboratory accreditation program as well. So you, know, you could kind of you could kind of like figure this out if you could just figure that V it means voluntary uh, protection program. Okay, so what's the purpose of uh, providing a field blank along with samples for analysis? Anyone want to hazard a guess on what that might be? Is it B? Okay, let's go through these. The blank is analyzed only if unusual results are obtained. Not true, right? They always analyze the blank. No. Yeah, it helps to assure quality control. That's true. Uh, true. Can also be used to adjust your gravimetric sample weights. That's true also. Remember when we when we, we did a sample, when we were doing mm -hmm. sampling for particulates in the air, we were using it so that we would, we would handle it exactly the way we, we would handle our uh, real sample. But then we would say, well, if this blank picked up weight without being exposed, well, we were doing something to add that weight to every sample that might be in one, right? So, so uh, that sample, uh, you would want to subtract that additional weight that the blank has uh, uh, contributed. So you would use it also to adjust your gravimetric sample weights. Okay, it provides a zero for laboratory, and that's not really true. So B and C, or in other words, E, both B and C, would be the correct answer there. Now, I would be, you know, I'm a generous guy, so I'd probably give you half credit for B or C, but uh, but C is more appropriate, D, E rather is a more appropriate answer. Okay. Uh, with regard to indoor air quality, which of the following factors has the most important influence on occup occupant perception of risk? Okay, now, read the questions carefully. What do you think it would be? Humidity level? Well, you know, it's humid. People, people, uh, you know, understand. They feel uncomfortable. I don't know about risk, responsiveness to concerns, and occupant communication. Well, that looks like a possibility. That's a management issue. Existence of building codes. That they, they really don't have any understanding or knowledge of building codes. The HVAC fan is maintained at a thousand. Well, they have no knowledge what the fan's operating. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I would say B. Right, responsiveness. Yeah. That's really that's really true. In fact, that's where I my in my experience, that's where the most lawsuits wind up when there are indoor air quality complaints and the management building management's not responsive to the complaints. Eventually, somebody goes out and either gets sick or gets a lawyer or so on and so forth. Okay, respirable particulates, approximately what? Uh, which aerodynamic diameter? C. Yeah, I agree with that. Anybody else want to answer here? I mean, you know. Anybody else? Oh, well, you know, I think Matthew's. Let me, let me. Matthew. Yeah, let me unmute Matthew. Okay, now, now he has an opportunity to talk also. All right, so um, uh, let's see. 
A PVC filter is used for ga gravimetric particulate sampling because, and again, if, you, if you're not sure of the answer, start to eliminate ones that don't make any sense. They electrostatically att attract dust particles without the need for a sampling pump. We know that's not true. We use them with a sampling pump. Yeah. Uh, they're hydrophobic. They're hydrophobic. Uh, yeah, hydroscopic means they absorb water. Well, since we're doing gravimetric analysis, we don't want water getting absorbed from the filter because it's going to add. To, we're going to think that that added weight is particulate. So we want them to be hydrophobic. And finally, they're only torturous, but they're not the only torturous uh, path filters available in that size. So it would it would be B. Okay, good. Which of the following tubes is used to collect toluene samples? Okay, we mentioned yeah. that. Uh, it would be B, right? The 150. Mm. Remember what the 50 is for? Oh, really? What's that? Mm. You, you remember what the 50 was for? The the 50. Mil I'm, I'm sorry. Excuse me. It would be A. Remember? Did I say? Yeah. Did I say B or A? Yes. <laughs> oh, I okay. Who uh, and you guys it's agreed a, with me? But yeah, it's A. Very yeah, disappointing yeah. you guys agreed with me. You're so easy to be swayed, right? It's activated charcoal, right? For toluene, we use activated charcoal, right? So that would be a 100 milligram sample portion of the cartridge with a 50 milligram backer. Remember what that backer is used for. If any toluene is, is found in that backup section, it means that some of the toluene got through the initial 100 milligrams and you can't rely on the 100 milligrams to have captured all of the uh, toluene that was in the air. Okay, that could happen because there's more higher concentration than you would expect it, and it, it, it saturates the activated charcoal. It could also happen because you're sampling at too high a, uh, a uh, flow rate, you know, so the activated charcoal doesn't have time to absorb it as well. Okay, silica gel, these others are used for other purposes, for other materials, and you know which one to use by looking at the NIOSH procedure for that particular material. And, you know, Drager tubes uh, uh, have their own special blend of uh, poisons and stuff like that that are in them so that you can, uh, uh, so that they can change color rather than uh, uh, absorb material. Okay. Okay. So we also want to go over these other, calib these other, these other calculations that might be involved in the test. So I'm going to go and pull up the two assignments. I, I noticed that almost virtually everybody, I think, I think by this time, everybody has submitted the two assignments. So I'm going to grade them. Um, uh, 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 I'll, you know, I was hoping to grade them after we did this session so that like, you know, you'd have a first shot at it. Now the exam, you only get one shot at the exam. It's in class. It's a live thing. It's timed and so on and so forth. But any of the lab work or the assignments where you're asked to do calculations, uh, if you submit it, before the due date, uh, initially, you can always, I'll let you always go back to it and redo it for a higher grade, right? So there's no reason why that 30% of the course or whatever it was that you can't get 100% on that portion of, the a portion of it, as long as you keep up with the work as we go on. Okay, so let's take a look at, let's start with airborne particulars because it's a little bit easier. Okay, I'm going to open up the uh, assignment sheet. Oops, oh, that's actually somebody's that's somebody's, oh no, that's it. This is, this is, oh, I gave you a layout so that you would have a starting point. That's right. I remember now. Okay. So you would, you, you would do this various description of introducing uh, the lab work, the purpose of it, the equipment used, so on and so forth. So let's look at the actual calibrations. Okay. So now one of the things that we did here was that we know that we're going to take a pump and we're going to pull air through a cartridge. And we need to know how much particulate we capture on that cartridge. But we also have to know how much air that we filtered because the standard that we're using, um, 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 here we go, this one is the standard, 500 is the standard for total particulates, right? And the 600 is the, uh, is the standard for respirable particulates using a cyclone, right? To separate the smaller particles out. So you're only collecting the smaller particles. But we're going to compare that to the OSHA permissible exposure limit. Okay, so for this particular standard, which is just nuisance dust, any other kind of unregulated dust, um, we're going to want to know how much particulate matter by weight is in the air that we sample in a volume of air. And then we're going to convert that into the equivalent amount of weight of particulate that would be present in a cubic meter of air if our sample represented 
that whole cubic meter. Okay, so first thing we need to know is how much air did we sample? Okay, so now the problem is, is that our pumps, uh, some of them may have little little uh, uh, rotometers built into them. Some of them may, may have digital measurements of what the flow rates are. Those are approximate. They're only calibrated probably once a year by the manufa- by sending it to the manufacturer. So you really can't depend on them to be a reliable measure of the flow that's actually going through this through the pump. They might be a good estimate, but they're not necessarily a very accurate uh, 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 measurement of the actual flow rate. So what we would do is we would use a calibration device, and we would med- take take readings of the flow going through the pump with the sample train put together. We take a dummy cartridge, dummy filter cartridge, put it on there, and you know to provide the same resistance as our sample would be. We use the same tubing and materials, and we would pull air through that and measure how much air is being pulled through that pump, uh, say every minute or so. Okay, and the way that we would do that is we did it two ways in the lab. We used a, a soap bubble or a wet calibrator to measure uh, how much time it took uh, for the uh, 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 how much what volume of air went through the pump every minute, and we also used a dry calibrator. Uh, I think they were, I think we had at least one or two of them working, so we were able to use that as well. So on the the calculations, these are just two methods of of calculating the flow rate. So I'm just going to do one of them because the calculations will be identical for both of them. So let's say, for instance, that in one minute we saw we used our wet calibrator, our soap bubble, and we had 300 uh, 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 it's 300 milliliters or cc's per minute cubic centimeter. By the way, cubic centimeter and liter, you know, in a burette are the same thing. Uh, a, a milliliter, rather, a milliliter is one thousandth of a liter, and a liter is the same thing as a thousand cc's. So uh, one cc is the same thing as one milliliter, okay, one thousandth of a liter. So let's say the first reading was 300. Now, the only problem with this is, is that the pump can vary a little bit. Our equipment, our uh, precision with which we, we time it and so on and so forth can vary a bit. So we want to take several readings and a- an average time. So I'm going to say, okay, let's say the next reading is 250 and say the third reading is 400, uh, three, uh, 350, let's say. Okay, so our average reading uh, uh, with the calibrator was 300 cc's per minute, or 0.3 liters per minute. Another way of expressing this, besides cc's, would be 0.3 liters per minute. Okay, so so um, um, so now we're going to use this pump to draw a sample of air. If it's a worker. He's going to wear this pump for eight hours, so we're going to get uh, uh, sixty minutes, or sixty minutes times eight, or or, or four hundred eighty uh, minutes of exposure time. Time that we're going to pull air through this pump. If it's area monitoring, maybe we'll only do it for an hour or two, or something like that. I'm going to assume that we did the, we, that we exposed it for for uh, say a uh, hundred minutes to make the math easy. Okay, so now we we exposed it for a hundred minutes. We have our pump. We take our pump back. Now, these pumps, especially over a long period of time, the battery is going to start to decline on these pumps. There may be um, uh, some other reasons why the flow rate might change on the pump. So most of these really modern pumps, they actually they kind of self-adjust for the uh, 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 pressure drop from the filter, and they also uh, uh, they self-adjust for the voltage drop on the battery, really, really good ones. But they're not perfect. So in order to understand what the flow rate at the end of the period is, we're going to do this again. Let's say this time, I'm going to, I'm going to exaggerate this a bit and say, let's say this time comes out to 200 liters per minute, cc's per minute, milliliters per minute, and 175 and 1225. And our average winds up being... 200 cc's per minute. Okay, so now this is pretty a, a dr- really dramatic difference, right? But uh, I'm just using this as an example. So the average now is 200 cc's per minute, or um, actually, I'm, you know what I'm going to do here? Yeah, two, uh, that's good. 200 cc's per minute. Or, or in other words, 0.2 liters per minute. Same thing. Okay, so now I'm going to average the average 
flow rate before and the average flow rate after to get the, the real flow rate for the entire period. When we started, it was 300 cc's per minute. When we ended, it was 200 cc minute, cc's per minute. So the average over the entire period was probably somewhere in between or about two, 250 cc's per minute. So I'm going to say to myself, okay, this is the, the, our actual flow rate over our average flow rate over the entire period of time was 250 cc's per minute and uh, 0.25 liters per minute. Okay, so now the next thing we need to know is how much particulate that we captured, right? So before sampling, uh, we weighed the filter, okay? So let's say that before, anybody remember roughly what how many micrograms the filter weighed before sampling? I, I'm gonna mute, I'm gonna mute I'm gonna mute you guys now because you get a little bit of uh, background noise. Okay, okay. Type in ch type in the chat box if you need if you want to uh, 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 get involved in this as well or have it, or ask a question. Okay, because I can't read I can't see you so I can't see you whether I'm going too slow or too fast. Okay, so now anybody remember roughly what uh, the filters weighed? Rough idea. Was about uh, uh, was it uh, a couple of hundred micrograms? Anybody want to type in a guess? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna make up a number. Okay, I'm gonna say before sampling, the filter weighed 200 micrograms. Right after sampling, the filter weighed. Uh, let's say um, um, I'm actually gonna say before sampling weighed 210 uh, 200 micrograms. After sampling. It weighed 310 micrograms. Okay, so now the weight difference between these two is 110 micrograms. Okay, 110 micrograms. Okay, so that difference, since I'm using a, a filter that's uh, 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 hydrophobic, it doesn't like water, it won't absorb water, I can pretty much assume that the increase in weight is probably due to particulate that was in the air. In this case, we're not going to go further and analyze it for what kind of particulate. We're just going to look for any, we're just going to assume that all of this is some sort of nuisance dust that we're interested in. That's the standard we're dealing with. Okay. Now, the only problem is, is that there's always a possibility that in setting up our filter, in, in uh, handling our filter, the environment we set it up in and so on and so forth, we might have affected that filter in some way. So let's say that that filter, um, 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 what's the second value for the average? Uh, it's 200 cc's per minute or 0.2 liters per minute. 0.2 liters per minute. And this was 0.3 liters per minute, right? Before was 0.3, after was 0.2. So the average, overall average, was uh, uh, a quarter of a liter per minute. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to this. Our filter blank, let's say our filter blank weighed a 200 milligrams, just like our the one that we use for, for filtering. And then after we, after we were done, we didn't actually do sampling. In, in the case of the uh, filter blank, we didn't actually sample anything. Let's say afterward it weighed 210 micrograms. We picked up 10 micrograms without even exposing this thing, right? So that is something that happened in the handling of the filter. So we need to say to ourselves, well, the, the same thing, because we handle it the same way, 10 micrograms of the weight we picked up in our sample was likely due to our handling. So we want to subtract it. Okay, so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to, I'm going to do this calculation now. So let me plug in my little tablet here so that I can write. Okay. Okay. I'm going to need to be able to see this and write at the same time. So I need to do a little bit of manip manipulation here of these windows. Okay. And I'm going to do this intuitively first, and then we'll look at the formula. Then we'll do it with the formula. So first, let's do it in a way that we'll understand. So what we're looking for is we're looking for the weight of this material 
per volume of air. Okay, and we want this weight, this weight volume to be in milligrams per meter cubed. That's what we want to wind up with. It's not what we're starting with, but that's what we want to wind up with. So on the top, we want our weight. On the bottom, we want our volume. Milligrams, uh, the weight over the volume of air, right? So what is our weight? How much weight did we pick up? Well, we picked up 110 micrograms minus the 10 micrograms from our blank. So we actually picked up 100 micrograms. And how much air did we, uh, air did we uh, sample? Well, the fl average flow rate was 2.25 liters per minute. And we sampled for 100, meter, 100, min 100 minutes. Right? So how much, let's see, min minutes cancels out. So how much did we actually find in the air? We found 100 micrograms, right, over, let's see, 100 micrograms over 0.25 times over 25 liters of air. Okay, so we have 100 micrograms, oops, in 25 liters of air. I'm just rewriting that. Everybody okay with that so far? Right? Give me a yes or a no. Okay, we're okay on that, right? Okay, good. Thanks. All right, so I just want to make sure you're still there and awake. You know, I, I know some students tend to have like a cocktail or something like that. Well, this is going on online. I can't see what you're doing there. Okay, so, and I won't ask you to turn your uh, uh, your webcams on. Uh, so at any rate, so we have 100 micrograms, 25 liters of air. How many, uh, we want to change this into into cubic meters, into one cubic meter. How many liters are in a cubic meter? How many liters are in a cubic meter? Anybody know? One of you guys, a thousand. Thank you very much. There's a thousand liters per meter cubed. So I'm going to multiply this by a thousand liters per meter cubed. Okay, these two, a meter cubed and a thousand liters, same thing. So it's equivalent. I can multiply by this without affecting this ratio. Okay, so what's going to happen here? Liter's going to cancel out, and I'm going to wind up with a thousand times, uh, 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 I'm going to wind up with 100,000 micrograms over a cubic meter of air. Okay. So now I have micrograms. How many milligrams in a microgram? Or how about this? How many micrograms per milligram? Anyone has a, has a guess about that? Well, oh yeah, I, I well right now I just want to know how many micrograms per per. Oh, the tw it, the twenty. Oh, oh, we're doing that twenty. Excuse me. The uh, what did I do? Did I do something? Twenty five, a thousand. Uh, uh, you're right. The twenty five over twenty five. Right. Well, actually, I can divide the twenty five out, and the twenty five divides into this, and it's four thousand micrograms. You're right. I forgot about that. Okay. 4,000 micrograms. Okay, so we have 4,000 micrograms per cubic meter of air. And what is that going to be equal to? Let's see. Well, how many micrograms are there per milligram? Well, a milligram, a microgram is a billionth of a gram, right? So let's see. There's a, there's a, uh, actually a millionth of a gram. So there's a million micrograms. In a, lead, in, a, in a gram, there's a thousand milligrams in a gram. So it's 1,000 micrograms per milligram. Okay, so we need to get rid of that microgram. So let's multiply this by one milligram per 1,000 micrograms, right? This is equivalent, right? One milligram, a thousand micrograms are the same thing. These cancel out, the micrograms cancel out. So we wind up with 4,000 divided by 1,000, or 4, 
right, which is four micro milligrams per meter cubed. Okay, am I right? I'm leaving it up to you guys to tell me if I'm right or not. Yeah, I'm right, right? So we got that. We had a little bit of conversion. We had to do some conversions. I noticed that Stavros gave you a link to a con, uh, con education video on conversion factors uh, in metric units. So you might want to take a look at that. Okay, but this is one of the ways that you might use it. Okay, so four milligrams per cubic meter. Am I over or under the OSHA PEL for nuisance dust? Okay, and not, not respirable dust, but total nu total particulates for nuisance dust. Over or under? You guys remember? It was in the class notes and the PowerPoint. Okay. That as a reminder, I believe it was I believe it was fifteen it was either ten or fifteen milligrams per cubic meter was the PEL. So we happen to be in this example under the OSHA PEL for nuisance nuisance dust. Okay, so one of the questions you might have might give you some initial readings and uh, some readings for the pump um, and give you a different, you know, a weight uh, increase in the uh, in the uh, filter and uh, some of the raw data and weight increase in the blank and so on and so forth and ask you to calculate uh, uh, the amount of dust that was in the air that was sampled in this environment and uh, ask you to decide whether or not it exceeded the OSHA PEL for that worker. Uh, since since you don't guys you guys don't seem to remember, I might actually give you the PEL just so uh, uh, you don't have to look it up. Right, we're under. Very good. Okay, so if you look, we have a formula. To, you know, we've done this kind of by the seat of our pants. If you look, we also have a formula that we could have used. Oops, wrong direction. Okay, how's that formula? Where's that formula? Let's see. I want to. Be able to work with both of these at the same time. See that formula. Okay. So the concentration in milligrams per meter cubed is equal to weight two minus weight one minus blank two minus blank one over the air volume in liters times. 10 to the third. The only tricky thing is here, these weights are in milligrams. So you have to do your conversion to milligrams before you'd go to this formula. Okay, so let's go, let's go ahead and do that. So weight two minus weight one, the weight, weight after minus the weight before was equal to 100, uh, 110 micrograms. Now remember, a microgram is, is a thousandth of a milligram. So that's actually 0.110 milligrams, 0 0.110 milligrams. Just move the decimal place over three times. Okay, minus, what's the difference in, in the blank? Minus 10 micrograms is 0 0.01 milligrams. Right, I just did that conversion before doing anything else, right, over the air volume, which was in liters, okay, and we found that to be 25 liters, I think it was, times 10 to the 3, or a thousand, that's the same thing as saying times a thousand, okay, so what happens here? We wind up saying to ourselves, okay, this goes into this 40 times, uh, right, I think, am I right? Yes. 40, um, and uh, we wind up with 110 minus uh, one, point one, point one oh, oh milligrams, milligrams times 40 over a cubic meter, right? So a point one zero zero times 40 is going to be equal to 4 milligrams per meter cubed. So if you just plug into the formula, you'll be able to get the same answer. The only thing you have to be careful of is that the formula is asking you for, we know we can see that it asks you for the uh, air volume in liters, but it's asking you for the weight uh, of uh, weight difference 
and the blank difference, it's asking you for those numbers uh, 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 as milligrams. So you have to convert right away from micro. If, if I give it to you in micrograms instead of milligrams, you'd have to do that conversion. I might be generous and just give it to you in milligrams as well. Okay, so um, what happens if the blank doesn't change weight? W what do you guys think happens there? If the blank before and after weight on the blank is the same, which probably will be most of the time, what do you do then? Anybody want to hazard a guess? What would you do then? Right, nothing to subtract. Zero minus zero, so you can just forget about the blank entirely. All right, good. Okay, good. So let's take a look at the uh, next uh, uh, the next problem that we had, and that was the uh, well. Actually, we have some other we have some other possible examples that we have here. Uh, how do the total restable votes? Well, we didn't do, but we didn't wind up doing both, right? But you can actually you, you would of course know that the restable dust is is a smaller number a smaller amount than the total dust of course uh does black filter away so well that that you got a chance to do identify the potential causes for measurement error during the lint okay and get a chance to make your give your opinion about that i'll review them on the uh, labs uh and what potential causes sampling area is okay, so for the uh total dust okay Let's see if there's any other calculations that we have to get through here Cause a sampling area for the respirable dust sampling. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, let me ask you that. Let's let's take a quick look at these. Identify potential causes for measurement error during the lab exercise, including the weighing procedure. What can happen during the weighing procedure? Well, the scale could be out of calibration. We need we need to calibrate the scale as well as everything else. Uh, uh, might be vibr Remember, if you hit the table, it might be vibrations and so on and so forth. Make reading it difficult. So you can come up with some reasons why there might be some difficulty in getting a good reading. Potential cause of sampling area of sampling error for the total dust sampling. Well, if you don't measure the flow accurately, if you don't measure the, uh, uh, if, you, if there's a difference in the weight or something like that, uh, there's a problem with the blank. Uh, what are potential causes of sampling area error, error for the respirable dust? Respirable dust is a special s situation, okay? What, what 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 is there what is there that is what is there that's critical for in the respirable dust that's not so critical when we're measuring total dust there's some parameter in the in the uh, way that we do uh, this collection there's some uh, mechanism in this collection that uh, is more critical for respirable dust than it is for uh, the cyclone right what about the cyclone I mean, you put the cyclone in there, it kind of works automatically, right? So what could kind of mess up your getting the proper fraction of respirable dust when you use the cyclone, right? What is there about that cyclone or about any individual cyclone? If I gave you two cyclones made by two different manufacturers, they might have a difference in this particular way that you would use them. Anybody want to hazard a guess? Okay, think about this. The cyclone depends on air spinning inside the device to separate the particle sizes, right? Aerodynamic particles. If what it, uh, each cyclone, in order to get specifically only to to uh, actually remove particles over four, over five microns, over four microns, but let all those four and smaller go through, it has to spin at a certain velocity. What determines that spin? the velocity of air coming into the cycle, the, the cyclone, right? So each individual cyclone is calibrated for a specific flow rate. So when you do respirable, when you do non-respirable uh, sampling, right, total, total, excuse me, total uh, uh, respirable particulate sampling, you have a range of velocities, say anywhere from 0.2, uh, from uh, a quarter of a liter per minute to two liters per minute, Whatever's in the standard, you have a range of velocities that, that you could use or flow rates that you could use for your pump. When you're using a cyclone, you need to be as close as possible to the rate that that cyclone requires. The one that we were attempting to use or would have used had we had the time for it in the lab uh, requires, uh, I believe it's 0.4 liters per minute. Uh, in order to operate correctly. So if you're using it at 6 li 0.6 liters per minute or 0.2 liters per minute, 
it's not going to properly give you the respirable portion of that sample. So that's something that's specific to the cyclone. Uh, what is done with the dust that falls into the grit pot of the cyclone? Nothing. You throw it away since you're not interested in that portion. And what did the sampling procedure do? You did, how did that? How did how did the sampling procedures we use in the lab um, uh, differ from NIOSH methods? I'll leave that up to you. There are a lot of differences in the way that we did it and set up the sample train and stuff like that. You can read the you can read carefully through the standard and take a look at it. But I'll I'll be going through some of the, uh, 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 the assignments that you submitted. Okay, and like I said, you can I'll give you the opportunity to go back and resubmit it. Okay, so now let's take a look at asbestos. Okay, and so with asbestos, we're in a little bit different situation. With asbestos, we're not doing a gravimetric. Sorry, Tony, there was, I'm sorry, there was, we skipped a question there in the chat right now. Do you oh, want to repeat the question before we move on? I didn't see. What question was it? So, it's... Uh, yeah. Uh, actually, I was asking that: uh, Do we have to do a lab testing while exam, or it's it's just a calculation only? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not sure. You mean when we're taking the test tomorrow? Uh, like on the Thursday, do we have to do a practical, or it, or it's just a paper paper test only the oh, calculation? It's a, test. it's a paper test. No, I'm not going to make you go through the uh, sampling procedure again. I'll give you. I'll give you. Oh, oh yeah. Wait, I'll give you the weights, the flow rates. And ask you to do the calculations with it. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, good. Uh, thank you, Stavros. Oh, by the way, I guess you, I guess you have uh, Stavros. Do I have you as an administrator? Were you able to turn on, turn off the, uh, the? Uh, uh... I think that uh, we can all turn on our microphones. Oh, okay. If we want to. Okay, and then I have to go back yeah. and. Look yeah. Back. Okay. As long as there's no microphones. <laughs> As long as there's not too much back. I don't have total control over us. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, actually, I do. I think. Right. But okay. uh, but I, I don't have to exercise it. You know. So at any rate, <laughs> uh, it, it, uh, as long as there's no background noise, I, I'll you know you guys can turn your, your mics on and stuff like that. And you'll know if you got other stuff going on at home and stuff. You're not, not going to want it on our recording. Okay, so at any rate, or probably not anyway. So anyway, okay. So let's look at asbestos now. In this case, we're getting away from gravimetric analysis. We're actually doing a count of fibers. Remember the Walton Beckett graticule? We're going to look at it under a microscope. Specific magnification. It's a specific area that it covers. Okay, so now um, uh, in this case, I'm going to uh, just, let's see if I have. Uh, here's a sample of the counting instructions. You recall that that's one of the ways. Uh, this is one of the samples that we use to determine whether or not a sample should be counted as one fiber or two fibers or uh, uh, half a fiber and so on and so forth. Okay, so I'm going to go to our counting, to our, our example. I'm going to skip the beginning of this for right now. Uh, well, not, maybe not. May, let me just go over this quickly. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Uh, so we got a 25 millimeter cassette, different size than the other cassette. In this case, we're not going to weigh the thing. We're just going to wind up uh, examining it under the microscope. Before we examine it under the microscope, we are going to draw a certain volume of air through it using the NIOSH procedure as a guideline, type of uh, a filter that we're going to use, the flow rate that we're going to use, so on and so forth, all, des all, all described in the NIOSH procedure. Okay, so uh, we're then, once we've done that, we're going to mount that. Uh, 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 on a slide, uh, render it transparent and uh, uh, cover it with a cover slip. Okay, and then we're going to actually use those rules to count uh, uh, areas that are within that little. Um, uh, you know, I'm struggling to remember now. I think it's a 50 millimeter diameter circle, 50 micron diameter circle. It might be in the counting instructions. Uh, it is. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. 100 micron diameter. 100, 100 micron, yeah, 50, 50 radius, 100 micron diameter. Okay. Uh, let me go back out of this. So 100 micron diameter. Okay. Um, and each one of those 100 micron diameters, we're going to move around the slide and we're going to take readings. In one spot, we're going to take a reading. But we might get a reading of, uh, we might count two fibers in, in that field. We're randomly going to move it to another spot on the, on the, on the uh, filter. But we might count none, then the next one, one, next one, two, next one, one, next one, none, none, none. We're going to count at least 20 fields. 
If we count 100 fibers before we get to 20 fields, we're going to stop at that point. And we're going to average the number of fibers that we got per field. Okay, so let's say that all our fields were, were uh, half our fields were three, and the other half of our fields, we got 10 fields, we found three, 10 fields, we found one. So our average per field would be two. So we have two fibers per field. Okay, so now uh, we also do a blank to see if we see any fibers there. I'm going to assume that there are no fibers found on our blank. We didn't manage to get any stray asbestos fibers onto our blank. Okay, and we're going we're gonna to take a look at this. Okay, so we're going to say our blank is zero. So we have an average of two fibers per field. Well, now we're going to take a look at uh, uh, what the area is that we actually sampled, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're gonna do this, you know, from scratch. Okay, so now let's take a look at what the area is that we were looking at when we were using the Walton grad, the Walton Becker graticule. Okay, first of all, uh, the actual filter itself. How many millimeters wide was the filter? Right? What did we say it was? 100 microns. Oh, no, the filter. 100 the, microns. The whole filter. The whole filter was was uh, 25 millimeters wide, right? 25 millimeter cassette. Oh, yeah. Right? And how big? 25 millimeters, right? Well, how wide is that in, in microns? Well, a micron is a thousand times that. That's 25,000 microns, right, wide, the, the whole filter. Right, so our little hundred micron area was only about that big, and we went around and did that twenty times. Right, so we only sampled a very tiny portion of this filter. Right, the we, we the filter itself, we'd have to take tens of thousands of measurements to to actually count every fiber on this filter. So the when we say that we had two fibers per field. We had two fibers from for each one of these little circles. So now let's see how many of those little circles were in here. Well, first of all, what's the area of that Walton Beckett graticule? Well, I'm going to blow it up here. This is 100 microns, 100 microns wide, right? So the area is pi r squared. So 100 microns is going to be, let's see, 100 microns. Uh, uh, the radius is 50 microns. So 50 microns times 50 microns is 2,500 microns times 3.14, right? So let's just figure that out. Three point one four times the radius is 25 times the radius is 25 is equal to 1,962. 62, actually 0.5, um, uh, what is that going to be? It's going to be microns squared, right? Square microns. That's the area for each one of these little, uh, little areas here. Now, what about the filter area? What's the filter area? Again, that's going to be pi r squared. Well, initially, we would think maybe 3.14 times uh, uh, 25, mic 25 millimeters times 25 millimeters, right? problem with that and that is is that the that the cartridge captures the filter with the edge overlapping the filter to trap it in place so i really don't have 25 microns here 25 millimeters across this really turns out to be 22 point i think it's 22.14 or something like that i'm just going to call it 22 millimeters across instead of uh, 25 millimeters across. That's the actual area that was exposed to the flow of air. So what area am I working with here? What's the area of this entire filter? Well, the area of the entire filter is going to be 3.14 times, and I'm going to change this right now to microns. 22, let's see, 22 microns wise, 11, mi 11 millimeters uh, radius, right? Uh, 11 millimeters it's really 11,000 microns. Everybody agree with that? Stavros, you agree with that? Right? Times 11,000 millimeters squared, microns squared. Okay, so what does that come out to? Let's calculate that. 
Okay, I'm going to clear this. 3.14, 3.14 times 11,000 times 11,000 equals equals 3 million. I'm not even going to bother to write it down. I'm going to put it in memory. I'm going to clear the memory out first. And I'm going to add this to memory. Okay, and I'm going to clear this. Uh, no, I'll just leave it the way. Yeah, I'll clear it. Uh, maybe not. So the entire filter is, let's see, comma, comma. The entire filter is almost 400 million square microns. Right? We're dealing with, oh, good. Thank you. Someone else beside me got uh, got pretty much the same answer. Excellent. I'm so glad to hear that. Okay. So I'm going to see how many of these fields are there in the area of the filter. So I'm just going to take this and divide my 3,779,000,000 uh, so on and so forth uh, square microns by 19.62. 1962, rather. Okay, and what do I get? Well, I get that there is, I think I did this wrong. There is 193,000 of these fields. You know, I, I think I missed something here. 2,500 squared looks right. That looks right. This looks right. Uh... Let's see if I got. Okay, anybody uh, anybody see any errors in my math here? I think I'm right. Yeah, the field area is right. I think field area is right. Right, it is, it is 100 microns wide. So, it, I'm sorry, it would be 50. Hang on a sec. Oh, yeah, 50. Let me do that again. Let me do the field area again. It's going to be the clear. Three, whoops. 3.14 times 50 microns times 50 microns radius is up. Oh, I got the field radius wrong. This is 78. Oh, no. I just erased it. I must have, I must have to clear while I was doing that. 3.14 times 50 times 50 equals 7850. Yeah, this should be 7850. Okay, so now, hopefully, I didn't lose this. Clear. Memory recall. It's still there. Divided by 7850 gives me about 48,000, about roughly 49,000 fields. Okay, I'm going to call it 49,000 fields. Let's make our math a little bit easier for now. Okay, so there are 49,000 of these little areas in the inner part of this filter that was exposed to the air. So how many fibers... Did we capture, if there are two fibers per field, two fibers per field, and there are 49,000 fields, okay, oh, fields cancel out, so we captured 98,000 fibers. Okay, so now we want to know how many fibers there are, remember that 98,000, I'm going to go here. I'll rewrite that, 98,000 fibers per field, okay? So now we need to know, we want to express our, uh, our concentration of asbestos in the air as fibers per volume, okay? Specifically, fibers per cc, per cubic centimeter of air, okay? So we have 98,000 fibers, how much air did we filter? How much air did we actually pull through this filter to capture those 98,000 fibers? Okay, so now in order to know that, 
we have to know what our flow rate was in our pump. Okay, so let's say for argument's sake that our flow rate in our pump was one liter per minute and we sampled for 60 minutes. And our total volume that we sampled was 60 liters. Okay, so we have 60 liters of air, 98,000 uh, of fibers, and 60 liters of air. But we want, we want our result in cc's or cubic centimeters. Anybody remember how many cc's were there per liter of air? Right? One liter has a thousand cc's. A thousand milliliters, same thing as a thousand milliliters. So if I multiply this by one liter over a thousand cc's, right? Liters cancels out. I get 98,000 fibers in 60 liters. Each one's 1,000 cc's, 60,000 liters, cc's. So 60,000 into 98,000 98,000 divided by 60,000 is equal to 1.63 fibers per cc. Okay, is everybody okay with that? Anybody have like any uh, grievances? Think I did something wrong? Are we comfortable with that? So this stuff, once you get comfortable doing some unit conversions, this is really a simple operation. Okay, it's really, you just have to think about, well, how many fibers did I capture and how much air was present? How much air did I filter? to capture it, and how am I going to get my answer into the form that I need it in to compare it to the PEL or, say, clearance level? Can, uh, can I tell uh, uh, elementary school children that they can re-enter the space if this is the level of, uh, uh, of asbestos that was in the air after we did an abatement? Is this, uh, have I satisfied the clearance level here for you guys that know a little bit about it? asbestos? No, I can't, can I? I think the clearance level, I think, is either 0.1 or 0.0. I think it, for schools, I think it might be 0.01 fiber per cc, right? So this is above the clearance level. So if, you had, if you're doing an abatement and when you're all done, there was that much uh, asbestos still in the air, you could not reoccupy the space until you got that under control. Okay, so there are some other versions of these questions that continue on here. Now, most of these... Are just are just um, are just uh, just changes, just differences. On give you give you data. For instance, this one, the average count was uh, uh, 2.5 fibers. It gave you the filter area as 385 millimeters square millimeters. It didn't bother to make you uh, the field area. It called that many millimeters. We used microns instead of millimeters. So you know, you just have to divide this in the field area into the filter area to get the number of fields, right? Divide this into this to get the number of fields. You should get roughly 49,000 fields. If you actually do it, you may not get exactly that number. If you actually do it, so get whatever number you use. But that's probably the magnitude that you're going to get for that, right? So this gives you the number of fields. This gives you the number of fibers, so you know the number of fibers per field times the number of fields is going to give you the total number of fibers that you collected. This is your flow rate. This is your sample time. So multiplying 1.4 liters per minute times 312 minutes is going to give you the number of liters that you collected. In this case, about 500 liters. Okay. And the average blank, uh, 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 blank count was 0.36 fibers per field. So since that's not zero, you would subtract that from the point 2.3 fibers per field before you did your calculation of the number of fibers. So you would use this first, subtract it from the 2.3, and then uh, multiply it by the number of fields. So you get the number, total number of fibers, and then divide that by the volume of air. And the volume of air would be as liters, so you would multiply by 1,000 in order to get the liters, change the liters into uh, cc's. 
Okay, so that's basically what you'd be doing there. Here, uh, given the following day, calculate the required sampling time. Well, in this case, you're given all the other information, given the average count. Uh, they haven't bothered giving you a blank count. They're giving you the average count. They give you the filter area, the field area, the flow rate, and they told you the result was one fiber per cc. So you can work backwards from this. Uh, we're kind of running out of time, so I'm not actually going to work it out. Maybe I'll do it uh, later on and put it up uh, separately. Uh, uh, some number seven. Okay, so let's think about. Uh, you know, actually, let's do let's do at least one of these. Uh, uh, given the following data, calculate the average count. Uh, da -da, uh, 0.1 fiber PCC. Uh, the okay. Let's work this backwards. Maybe I can actually come up with, a, with some kind of formula for you right now where we're going to where we can figure this out. Okay, so now how would we do this? First of all, we would take the average count. The average count times the number of fields. Right? Over the flow rate times the time. So the top would give us the number of fibers. The bottom would give us the volume, right? And that would be equal to, okay? And um, 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 let's see. Number fields, blah, 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 da, da, da. and this would be uh, a flow rate. And that would be times 1,000 also because the flow rate is going to be in, le in liters, right? So if it's in liters, you're going to have to multiply by 1,000 on the bottom. But I'll, I'll leave that there. And that would give us the uh, uh, fibers per cc. Okay, that, that's the result we would get. So let's see what we have in question number seven. In question number seven, we have the average count is five. So we know what this is. It's five. The, the uh, filter area is 385 millimeters. The field area is 0 0.0785, so, so we can figure out what the number of fields is. Let's figure out what the number of fields is and put it in there. The number of fields that we're dealing with, whoops, ah, number of fields that we're dealing with, uh-oh, what did I do there? I don't need that. I don't need that. Boy, everything's going nuts here. Here we are. Okay. Mm, even that's going crazy. Oh, you know what it is? I'm leaning against my tablet here. Okay. So the so what do we have here? The 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 uh, I got to stop leaning against it. The the uh, 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 the field area is 300. Ah. Let me get this. Put this down so it stops doing this stuff. Oh, oops. Okay, here we go. 385 divided by the field area is 0 0.00785. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the Walton Beckett field area and dividing it into the total filter area to get the number of fields that are on the filter. And it comes out to 49,000 fields on the filter as it will come out or almost all the time for you guys it's going to be the same calculation so the number of fields is 49,000 number of fields is 49,000 that usually is going to be the same no matter what so there's an average of five fibers per field for 49,000 and what was the flow rate the flow rate was three liters per minute three liters per minute times the amount of time. Oh, they didn't give us the amount of time, did they? We have to figure that out. And it comes out to a concentration of one fiber per cc. So the only thing that I don't have here is the amount of time. There's only one unknown, so I should be able to solve for it. So let's do that. Let's five times 49,000 is uh, 200 and 
240, see, five, five less, 245,000. Am I right? Uh, divided by three times the time is equal to one. So I can cross multiply here and say, uh, but also times a thousand, right? I have to multiply by a thousand. So three times the times times a thousand. So it's going to be 245,000. Uh, 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 I see you guys, a couple of you guys have figured it out already. Uh, cross multiplying is going to be well, this times one, and this times one is going to be equal to uh, uh, 3,000 times the time, divide by 3,000. Okay, uh, and uh, 3 into 245 is 80, 81 minutes, 82 minutes, 81.66 minutes. Okay, yeah, you saw it. Okay, as long as you know where you went wrong, right, comes out to about, about uh, 8, 80, a little under 82, right, 81 and two-thirds minutes, right? So you can use this formula. Don't forget the times a 1,000 like I did. Right, this formula, average count times the number of fields divided by the flow rate in liters per minute times the time in minutes times a thousand. That thousand is there to convert liters into uh, cc's into uh, into liters or liters into cc's, liters into cc's. Three thousand, a th th thousand li a thousand cc's per liter. That's there for that purpose. Okay, and the fibers are here. In the next problem. In the next problem, you know you know the filter area and the uh, field area. You know that's forty nine thousand is going to give you the number of fields. You know the flow rate. Let's see what do we know. We know the flow rate. We know the sample time. We know the concentration, right? And we know the number of fields. So we can calculate the only thing that's left, which is the average count. Okay, so it's just an it's just a cross multiplying is an algebra problem from that point on. Okay, so hopefully we won't find anything that's like really uh, too challenging. I think whatever we wind up doing on the test is going to be very similar to this anyway. Okay, guys, so I'll uh, I'll convert this and I'll post it to YouTube. So you guys, if you want to come back and take a look at it, or for anybody else that you know of that wasn't able to attend, they'll be able to take a look at it. Uh, so trying to arrive on time if you can, so we can get started on the exam and we'll try and get it out of the way pretty quickly. Uh, and like I said, don't get too worried about it because, uh, it's a, it's not the whole course. It's only a portion of the course and, uh, you're going to have plenty of time to, I'm, I'm going to give you plenty of opportunity to, for you to make it up on the last, if you have an issue with the uh, problem with the test, you don't do that well on the test. You'll have plenty of opportunity to, uh, uh, submit assignments and labs and so on and so forth to get your grade back up again. So don't, you know, prepare for it. Don't panic, though. Right? So I'll see you guys on Thursday night. Good night. Oh, how many questions? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I think enough that I think it'll take you somewhere between an hour, an hour and a half to get it done. Good night, guys. Bye. Good night, Stavros.